Hey guys, I want to share this with you for a moment. I'm kind of stuck on the atonement right now. And so there's this idea that's very popular that um, on the cross during the suffering of Jesus that the Father in heaven forsook the Son. And also there's an idea that the Father poured out his wrath on the Son. And I think that these ideas come from uh, misinterpretations of certain scriptures and it's been taught over and over again and these ideas also kind of derive from the idea that Jesus became sin okay so the teaching is basically that Jesus became sin literally like an embodiment of sin or he took on the sins of the world which somehow kind of makes him a sinner in a way um, and because of that, that's why the Father poured out his wrath on him, and, and that's why the Father forsook him. And I think these are all misinterpretations of Scripture. I don't agree with any of that. And so the idea of Jesus becoming sin comes from Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. I would think this is one of the main verses. Which says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So he hath made him to be sin for us. Made him to be sin. And this is where people try to take this verse literally in some kind of sense. The idea that Jesus became sin. That Jesus actually literally became sin or that he took on the sins of the world in his body or, or some such. And so uh, these are things that I've heard before and kind of believed before, but, you know, maybe didn't really look into a lot or consider. And now as I hear these things, I don't agree with it. And so I look at Albert Barnes's commentary on this, and I just want to mention a few things that he points out. Here is the to be sin part of the verse. Uh, he said, literally, it is, he has made him sin or a sin offering. It says, what is the exact idea which the apostle intended con to convey? I answer, it cannot be that he was literally sin in the abstract or sin as such. No one can pretend, no one can pretend this. The expression must therefore in some sense be figurative so the expression that he has made him sin for us must be figurative okay this is not in a literal sense that Jesus became sin he goes on to say nor so these things are not accurate nor can it mean that he was a sinner for it is said in the immediate connection that he knew no sin and it is everywhere said that he was holy harmless undefiled so Jesus lived a perfectly sinless life and that never changed he's God in the flesh okay nor can it mean that he was in any proper sense of the word guilty for no one is truly guilty who is not personally a transgressor of the law and if he was in any proper sense guilty then he deserved to die. His death could have no merit than that of any other guilty being. And if he was properly guilty, it would make no difference in his respect, whether it was by his own fault or by imputation. A guilty being deserves to be punished, and there, uh, and where there there is desert of punishment, there can be no merit in sufferings. So, in no way could have Jesus taken on sins himself it would make him a sinner it would make him guilty it would make him deserving of punishment and uh, that's basically what people are saying when they're saying that god the father punished the son because of sin um, and so i think that we need to get away from that interpretation of the atonement and try to understand really what's going on here nor can it mean uh, Let's see, okay, I went over that. But all such views as go to make the Holy Redeemer a sinner or guilty or deserving of the sufferings which he endured border on blasphemy. 
That's actually what's being taught with the atonement a lot. I mean, listen to what I shared with Robert Baker. What does he say? That Jesus became sin and the Father saw him as sin and poured his wrath out on him. It's blasphemy. And are abhorrent to the whole strain of scriptures. In no form and no sense possible is it to be maintained that the Lord Jesus was sinful or guilty. As a cornerstone of the whole system of religion, that in all conceivable senses of the expression, he was holy and pure and the object of divine appropriation. Or approbation. Approbation. Uh, sorry. In every view which fairly leads to the statement that he was in any sense guilty, which implies that he deserved to die, is prima facie, I don't know, how that, a false view that should be at once abandoned. But if the elect declaration that he was made sin does not mean that he was sin itself or a sinner or guilty, then it must mean that he was a sin offering, an offering or a sacrifice for sin. And this is the interpretation which is now generally adopted by expositors. Or it must be taken as an abstract for the concrete and mean that God treated him as if he were a sinner. Which I don't, I don't really agree with that. But I think that the idea that he was uh, as a sin offering, I think, is more accurate. And so, you know, Jesus did die for the sins of the whole world. But that doesn't mean that he took on the sins of the whole world. You know, Jesus lived a perfectly sinless life. He was obedient to God in the highest. And um, therefore, you know, through his death, vicariously, anybody who believes in him, any sinner uh, in the world who believes on Jesus, has those merits that Jesus provided vicariously and so therefore their sins are covered you know um, and so in that sense Jesus died for the sins of the whole world but I think we need to get away from this idea that Jesus literally became sin or became the you know became the embodiment of sin or he uh, took on sins himself think that's absurd and we need to get away from the idea that the father poured out his wrath on him uh, you know the suffering came from the hands of sinners Jesus suffered because of sinners punishing him and uh, and he died for their sins so well, this needs to be looked into deeper, and I need to look at, you know, I want to look at other people's commentaries and stuff, but I think that Albert Barnes hits some important points here that we need to understand when it says he made him to be sin for us, that it's figurative. And uh, what it's really meant is that, you know, he was, he was as a sin offering. Uh, so, think about that, and God bless.